All right, let's kick this thing off. Hi, everybody. This is Heath Close with Build Box, and I am excited to welcome you to the Make Your Own Game series. We have something fantastic planned for this series. We're going to create a game from scratch. We're going to build it from start to finish. And we are not going to write a single line of code. In fact, we are not going to do any programming whatsoever. What we are going to do is design the entire game inside of BuildBox. Now, some of you that are new to BuildBox might be asking, what is BuildBox? And I think it's important that I answer that for you right now before we move any further. BuildBox is a powerful drag-and-drop game creation software so easy to use, it allows anyone to make games with it and it exports to multiple platforms. We already mentioned iOS and Android. It also exports to Amazon, OS X, tvOS, Windows Store, Windows EXE, and Steam. And BuildBox is responsible for quite a few hits, some of which you may already have on your own device. Games like Color Switch, which has become a complete cultural phenomenon with 90 million downloads worldwide, and games like The Line Zen and Endless Sky, which were both published by Ketchup. In fact, at the time of this recording, BuildBox developers have had 50 games featured by the Apple App Store, and 52 different games break the top 100, bringing the total to more than 100 features and chart toppers. Not only is this more hits than any other game builder out there, but it's more than all of them combined. And not only is BuildBox easy to use, but game development is also incredibly fast with BuildBox. Original builds of both Color Switch and the Lion Zen were built inside of a week. The bottom line is, with the drag and drop architecture of BuildBox, it is the easiest, fastest, most sought after, codeless game development solution available today, period. And I'm going to show you how to make a killer game with it, and we're going to start by using the creator. The creator is the most simple way to get us started in this series. It will automatically generate and build a playable skeleton of our game that we will then customize and make our own. Once we get inside our new playable game, I'm going to show you how to use the scene editor and how the different parts of the software are laid out, give you the tour, so to speak. And then we're going to cover how to start adding our own graphics to our game so we can customize it and make it our own. So I have a lot of information for you in this video. Let's just dive right in. When we start BuildBox, we first see the welcome screen. Some neat things going on here. We have a link to tutorial videos directly on BuildBox.com. We have a couple simple games to open up and explore so you can get a feeling for BuildBox and start to see how things work. At the bottom is the latest news surrounding BuildBox, the BuildBox team, and also BuildBox developers. We can open up any previous projects we have in development, but we're interested in the button in the upper left, the Create New button. We're going to click on Create New in the upper left, and we are greeted by the Creator window. This is where we begin creating our game. If we already have a title for our game, we can put it in here. And for this Make Your Own Game series, we're going to make a game called Glitch. We can also set some basic settings, like orientation, which is how we hold our device to play. We can also set how we score points in the game, whether we want multiple worlds to play through, whether we want to see a cutscene when we finish worlds in the game, and what menus we want BuildBox to generate for us. Let's add a pause menu in here. But the easiest part of using Creator is the list of gameplay settings presets. These allow us to choose from many different gameplay types to get us started. And for Glitch, we're going to choose Wall Jump. So when we're ready, we click Create at the bottom. Now, as you can see, BuildBox has generated a simple wall jump game for us with a couple scenes to get us started. And it's playable right now. In fact, let's check it out. Let's click on this Preview button right here in the upper right-hand corner, and we can actually play our game. The creator has us off to a good start here. Okay, let's go back into the main body of the software and I'll give you the tour. 
Let's start on the left side of the screen. Up here in the upper left, we have a button I'm going to show you later in the video because that button is going to take us to an upper level of development. So we'll cover that in just a bit. So under the button to the far left is the assets panel. Here are all the assets available to us to create our game and where we would find any new ones if we add any. All the assets are listed in expandable menus. We have menus for characters, game objects, game actions like power-ups and coins, effects including the new particle emitter, logic pieces, and labels. So anything that's actually in our game, this is where we're going to find it. To the right of the assets panel is the scene tree. The scene tree lists all the items we have in the current scene in the scene editor. Selecting an item here will select it in the scene, and we can hide it to make it easier to find or see other items around it, or we can lock it to avoid accidentally selecting and moving it while we're poking around in the scene. Over here on the far right is the options panel. When we select different items in the scene, the options panel will reveal the options for that particular item, and we can adjust the properties of every item here to behave as we see fit in our game. Also, if we select something in the Assets panel on the far left, there are global options that appear in the Options panel as well. At the bottom of the screen is where we will find the different scenes in our game. We can see that the one showing is the one we have highlighted. If we click on another one, that's the scene that will be in the Scene Editor above. We can even duplicate a scene we like by hitting D. And we can solo and mute scenes for testing using the S button for solo and M button for mute, which we're going to get to later. We'll see that in action. So in the scene that we have highlighted, we can design our level by moving objects around in the scene. Just click and drag, Control Z or Command Z to undo. And we can keep things in a line if we hold Shift while we're dragging. You can also use the arrow keys for fine tuning. The arrow keys will move things around by one pixel. Or if you hold the shift while using the arrow keys, they will move things around by five pixels at a time. And we can even duplicate objects using W, A, S, or D. So anything that's in the scene that we want to make adjustments to as far as size or rotation, we can do by grabbing the handles on each item and moving them appropriately. If we hold shift while changing its size, it will keep its aspect ratio, and we can rotate them with this circular handle on the corner. All of this can also be done with exact precision in the options panel if we need to. You'll notice the options panel changes when I select different items in the scene, but we're going to get into that later in the series. Lots of neat stuff we can do over in that options panel, but we'll take a look later. You also see some buttons at the top of the scene editor here. Let's go through these. The first one is the game frame button. Most of the time, you can just stick with what creator cooks up for you, but it's adjustable if need be. I suggest we leave it off for now so we don't accidentally move it around, but we can reveal it at any time if we need to. We have a button to lock the backgrounds, which is very similar to locking something down in the scene tree so we don't select it or move it, but it's strictly for any backgrounds in the game. We have Snap to Move. This turns on a 10-pixel grid that objects will snap to when we're dragging things around. We have Connection Mode, where we can actually connect items together so they can be moved together in the game. And also, connected items even duplicate together as well. So if you have a bunch of things you want to duplicate at once, this is a great way to do it. Just connect them all up and duplicate the master, and they'll all duplicate. And this last one here is debug mode. This is actually a more advanced feature that we're going to dive into in the next video. We have some other settings here in the upper right. We can preview just the scene we're looking at if we want to for testing. We can edit the fonts we will see in the labels we use. And some game settings, some of which we could have changed in the creator. And also this is where we would find our monetization options, where we will add our advertising and things like that. But we will cover that later. So that's the tour for right now. I'm going to show you more as we go along in this series. But now that we've taken the tour, let's get something done with this game. Let's start replacing the graphics with what we're going to use and start making this game our own. Okay, so to start, let's first replace the graphic for the walls that run up the side of the game. Okay, so in the assets panel here to the left, we're going to select the platform. 
and we'll see the global options appear on the far right in the options panel. And to replace the graphic for it, all we're going to do is drag the graphic into the default animation slot and done. It's that simple. Now let's select the enemies we have in the game, these triangle enemies. And again, to the right in the options panel, we're just going to drag the new graphic to the default animation. And again, we're done. It's just that quick. Now let's drag in a new background for the game. Right now we have two backgrounds in the game, but I'd like to replace both of them. So first we need to unlock the background so we can select them and delete them. Importing the background is as simple as dragging the image into BuildBox. When we do this, BuildBox will present us with the drag and drop wheel. Hover over the background option and let go of the mouse button. As you can see, our background is now in the game, but we want it to appear behind everything else. So there are two ways to achieve this. One way is to right click and select send to back. The other way is to drag it to the bottom of the scene tree. The scene tree lists scene elements from foreground to background, meaning elements at the top of the list appear in front of other elements and elements at the bottom of the list appear behind other elements. Wow, what a big difference a nice background makes. So we can change the speed at which these scroll by. A lower number will result in slower scrolling and a higher number will result in faster scrolling. So let's just make this first one we put in faster. We'll set background two to a speed of two and let's see how that looks. That looks pretty sweet, actually. All right, let's do the character. Select the character in the Assets panel. And to the right, in the Options panel, we see several animations we can import for our character. Anytime there isn't another animation to show, BuildBox will always show the default animation. So we can go ahead and get rid of this Move image. And let's now replace the default animation. And this is where things get really cool. So far, we've been importing single images into BuildBox, but BuildBox can compose complete animations from sequential PNG images. So just get them all selected and drag the entire sequence into the character's default animation. So this is really starting to look neat, but you'll notice now that we need to start changing our menus to look just as good. So now I'm going to show you that button in the upper left that I said we would get to later. It's called the Menu Editor button. We'll go ahead and click that, and BuildBox will take us up into the Menu Editor. The Menu Editor is where we would find all the user interfaces in the game and the game worlds themselves. The blue nodes are world nodes, and the green nodes are user interface nodes. We're going to double click on the main menu here and replace the graphics inside that just like we did for our enemies and platforms and character. We're going to select this background and drag in the new image. Now we need to make a few adjustments so we can scroll out if we like using the mouse scroll button and we can move the editor around by holding down the space bar and left clicking and dragging. And it works the same way in the scene editor. So as we design our levels, we can move things around to get a better look at things. Make a few adjustments using the image handles. Let's also replace the start button. If we have any issues selecting something while we're in here, just remember we can hide or lock things in the scene tree. We're going to select the title, do the same thing. By the way, you can probably see the options panel changing as we select different items. Again, we're not going to worry about all these settings quite yet. We'll cover some of that in another video. We're just going to get the aesthetics in order right now. In fact, let's even add a few images to this menu. All we need to do is just drag the image in. And again, Build Box will present us with the drag and drop wheel. Just drop it on the image option. Make any adjustments we might need using the handles hiding or locking other items if we need to. 
Let's drop in an image of our character the same way. Let's rotate him around here and make it look like he's coming off the wall. That looks pretty neat. All right, let's go back up into the menu editor and do the same for our game over UI. Again, just select the background, drop in the new image, make any adjustments we need to. Same with the game over. Drop in the new restart button. Drop in the new main menu button. All right, let's go back up into the menu editor, and now we'll do the pause menu. Select the background, drop in the image. Now, check that out. If you come across anything crazy like this, just use the options in the options panel. You can see that our scale is way off, so let's just make that one to one, and we're golden. In order to get to our pause menu, we have a pause button in our world UI. So let's just go in there, drop in a new graphic for that button. And let's have a look at our new game. This really looks fantastic. And that was super simple. So we did quite a bit of work in this video. We took the tour. We saw what Creator cooked up for us. We replaced a bunch of graphics so we can make this game our own. And we even got our menus looking good. We got quite a bit done. Now, in the next video, we're going to get into level design. So make sure you come on back for that one. And remember, if you need help with anything you see in this series, there are more helpful videos available at buildbox.com tutorials. You can always get to them in the welcome screen when you start BuildBox. There's a link. So come on back for the next video, and I will see you in part two.